Well, butter my bread and call it toast. The Maui News Sports Report is back by popular demand. We're going to keep things real simple here as we get our feet underneath us. Uh, we're going to bring you basically uh, a sports at, uh, center view of the MIL and Maui sports. I'm Rob Coleus. He's Jordan Helley. Uh, and yeah, Jordan, it's nice to be back, first of all. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's a lot of fun. We're uh, a little late to the game maybe yeah. this year, but uh, it's been busy. We'll catch you up to speed, and uh, we're going to hit the ground running here for the last uh, half or so of the fall, fall sports season. Yeah, and you know, uh, kind of a big weekend. A couple, you know, uh, in non-football sports, a couple big, uh, big results. Uh, but in football, an interesting battle Saturday night. The Lunas and Maui High, they're the best two defenses in the league in the 17-9 to final score. Uh, with the Lunas coming out on top kind of indicates that. Yeah, second time those two have met this year, second time we've seen a safety recorded. Yeah. As you'd imagine, right, it's sort right. of a defensive struggle, 17-9, to the Lunas over the Sabres, returning the favor uh, after they lost to Maui High to open up the year. The Lahaina Luna offense continues to develop as well. I think that's one of the bigger stories coming out of the first round where Lahaina Luna won the Division II first round title, assures themselves of at least a playoff berth. Uh, but with that sort of four or five quarterback monster yeah. that they throw out there, I think maybe the surprise of that group because of the returnees in, East, in, an, in an L.A. Scanlon and Etuati store, Bailey Honda might have looked the yeah. best out of all of them. And uh, that's a good problem to have for Lahaina Luna because no matter who they throw out there, they move the ball. Yeah, you know, he had maybe the biggest offensive play of the night on a night when there was a lot of big defensive plays. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they get the ball back with two and a half minutes to go right before halftime. Um, they did not complete a pass, by the way, except one of their four to the Sabres. Um, but uh, he breaks free. You know, they, they, they run twice. It's third and four. Um, if they don't get a, you know, if they don't get a first down, they're going to let the clock run down for sure. He breaks free through the line, 53 yards. He's a fast kid. Uh, you know, almost had a touchdown. Uh, but two plays later, Justice Tejada scored. And, you know, uh, Garrett Tejada uh, co-head coach, uncle to Justice and Joshua, said, yeah, we were going to run out the clock, man. So that was a huge play by Bailey Honda, who is more plays a lot more defensive back than he does quarterback. And I lo love the Lunas. Uh, and Nelly Scanlon, you know, didn't play last night. Um, Honda took snaps. Uh, Dean Miyamoto took snaps. And I love Donovan DeFang in that wildcat formation. Very effective. And Jordan, uh, a team you're very familiar with, uh, Kamehameha Maui, uh, you know, a, a methodical and impressive win on Friday night behind a kid who's really, really burning this league up run, rushing wise. Yeah, Damon Martin, he's a three year varsity guy in his junior year. First time he's really been healthy for an yeah. extended period of time. We saw flashes last year of him as a sophomore, particularly with the speed. This year he's been healthy in all five of their league games, and he's on pace to get over a thousand yards and maybe even get a little past that as well. Uh, which would be a, sort of a monumental achievement in the MIL uh, has been done in about 10 years or so. But he, he is their offense right yeah. now. And, yeah. and for Kamehameha, they have swept the upcountry battle for the second year in a row with Kinke Kalike. Sidebar, we got to get a trophy for that rivalry we gotta, somehow. Come on, uh, man. That, that, that's got to happen. Natural, we got to get yeah. uh, some of the upcountry businesses or something to, 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 to pony up a little bit. We'll get, we'll get a trophy sponsored or something like that. Uh, but David Martin's been solid. And for the Warriors, a good rebound after last week's loss to Lion Luna basically was the first round championship game. Uh, and I think for them, priority number one has to be get to a position where they feel like they can give Lahaina Luna uh, a run for their money in just two weeks' time because the turnaround is pretty quick. They don't yeah. play them a full round later. They're going to play them in just two weeks' time. Uh, so big game looming for Kamehameha coming up. Yeah, and uh, with the Lunas getting that win over Maui High, even, even more important, they all count. Uh, so, you know, when you get to this point of the season, it's nitty-gritty time, and i got to give credit to Dennis Diaz and Tyson Valley, uh, they have kept a, um, a you know a gritty bunch of kids together mm -hmm. uh, in their first year in a very tough gig, uh, at least right now up country. And uh, those kids are playing hard. They came up with three uh, three interceptions. Three different kids intercepted uh, uh, Sanchez passes, and he's a good quarterback. So uh, I think uh, I think it's going to be a really exciting down the stretch. Uh, run here Baldwin we're going to talk about them in a second but Jordan um, it's always a tough trip this this league has some of the biggest travel challenges of any league in the nation no doubt about it Hana travels to Seabury and snaps their 49 match uh, girls volleyball league winning streak 
Yeah, it says a lot. And Holland is a volleyball community. Yeah. There's no doubt about that on the boys' side, on the girls' side. Uh, and Hannah, who has given Seabury some stern tests over the last couple of years, obviously the last five or so with the 49 match win streak. But well, what a showing for the Dragons to yeah. go on the road, get that victory. Uh, and, and now the ML Division II race is, is up for grabs. And, and we've seen it. Hey, if you survive the ML D2, you're one of the contenders for the state championship. So Hannah's got to consider themselves one of the better teams in the state. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see how far the Dragons can take this. I put Hanna on number 10 on my top 10 list uh, for that for that win uh, specifically. What, what a huge win. And it wasn't just a win. It was a, it was a sweep. And the numbers were impressive, like 22, 16, and 18, something like that. But uh, uh, And then uh, yesterday, Jordan, that Hanna win was Friday night. Uh, Saturday on the Big Island, where the state meet is going to be, Seabury Hall girls take down the the big the big power Punahou, um on on where the the state meet is going to be. Yeah, I mean Seabury Hall is running programs right cross country and track, multiple state titles. Yeah. When you combine all of them, they basically dominated sort of Division Two cross country since the advent of that. Uh, and and again, they're they're one of the best teams in the state, regardless of classification, regardless of school size. Uh, and they, they've just got that thing rolling. And, yeah. and for them to go to the Big Island, that's going to be big to see if they can sort of translate that into another state title uh, come a month or so. They arrived only 40 minutes before the race started, had very little warm-up time. Uh, they won that meet over Punahou. Seabury, they, they do D2 in, in cross country. I'm not sure why. But uh, they're the four-time. They won all four Division II state titles in, in history. But they could win the overall this year. Mm -hmm. They do do overall scoring uh, and then say, oh, you're D2, so you're the D2 champ. But, yeah, they do overall scoring at the state championships. So uh, that's going to be a very interesting thing to look at. And, oh, by the way, the rest of their girls won the Seabury Hall Invitational uh, in, in MIL competition. So... Uh, just a very deep program that Bobby Grossman has going there. Uh, and, and Jordan, we mentioned Baldwin football was idle. They're the last unbeaten uh, in the MIL, but now they really, we know for certain that we're going to have an open division state tournament, a division one and division two, three tier state tournament. I think it's a good thing. And I think Baldwin uh, or Maui High, who's playing better, uh, whoever our Division One champion is uh, could be a state contender for sure. Yeah, I, I think so. Year in and year out, that's going to be the case. I think for Baldwin, they're going to need to clean some things up. Yeah. They're going to have to improve the passing game. They're going to have to cut down on the, the penalties. Lyle Luna probably should have beat them to end uh, near the end of the first round with a, a game out at Sioux Cooley Stadium. A lot of credit to the Lunas there. But for Baldwin, you're right, I think talent-wise, they match up with not the new Division One teams right. over on Oahu and Iolani in schools like Kailua and Lelehu and schools like that. But, uh, you know, for Baldwin, now a very clear goal to go after. It was a lot up in the air, but now we know exactly what the postseason is going to look like. They can go out, focus on the field, and, and look to get better in the second round. Uh, and, and you're right, they've got to watch out because this Maui High team's getting better every week. No doubt about it. And Maui High, when they're not playing a defense as good as the Lunas, uh, has gotten a lot better on offense, man. Uh, so I think we've got a ton to look forward to in the – in the rest of the fall season for sure. Uh, Jordan and I will be back as often as we possibly can and uh, we'll bring it all to you. And we hope you enjoy this one. It's gonna get better, I promise. And send us your bobbleheads.